You will now hear about another risk, the magnitude of which a drug company was unwilling to acknowledge for so long. You're about to meet two young women who say once you're on an antidepressant, it's hell to get off. Manufacturers call it discontinuation. Zap, zap, zap. It feels like electricity in the back of your head. It feels like your brain is actually seizing up. Some patients call it agonizing withdrawal. My whole body would be shaking as though my nervous system is on the fritz. Primetime's investigation discovered evidence that the makers of Paxil withheld information. This time downplaying the risks of withdrawal symptoms from their own studies. Symptoms range from mild temporary headaches to debilitating electric shock sensations. Shocks. Head shocks really throwing me off. Helen, a British college student, had failed to get off Paxil before. The BBC television network gave her a camera to keep a video diary detailing her next attempt to quit the drug. Headaches, muscle pains, sweating, trembling. As I take each step, there's this shock in, her, in my head that's completely throwing me off balance. Helen prepares to reduce her dosage further. Next week, I'll be on half a tablet every day. And to be honest, I'm really dreading it. I've got really awful head shocks. And, um... Eventually taking minute liquid doses from a dropper. Oh, God. After three months, finally off the drug she never imagined could take her down this path. I didn't know what it would do to me, and I would have never made the choice to take it had I known. Paxil is not the only antidepressant which can cause sometimes severe side effects. The Los Angeles law firm Baum Headland says they represent 3,000 American clients claiming the makers of Paxil withheld the facts about withdrawal. It's been too bad of a drive so far this afternoon, with just the exception of northbound I-15. One of them is Tara McMullen, a radio traffic reporter in Utah. She started taking Paxil nine years ago to cope with her divorce. Diagnosed with an anxiety disorder, she says Paxil helped. I thought that people take, you know, those types of medications to get through traumatic times in their lives, you know, whether it's a divorce or change job or move, and then you can just simply stop taking it when you don't need it anymore. But she says she couldn't stop. Paxil instructions recommend a gradual reduction in dose, but Tara says reducing didn't solve the problem. It just brought on new symptoms. And it literally felt like somebody had a nail on top of my head pushing it down. She even switched to a controlled release version of Paxil, but says she broke out in this rash. Tara says she just can't quit. You know, I'll do anything to get the drug back just so that I can work the next day, so the headache can go away, so I can think clearly um, and be able to perform whatever it is I need to do with my life. Um, That's not that unusual, says psychiatrist Joseph Glenn Mullen, author of The Antidepressant Solution. If I get a bottle of Paxil, and I look at the label, will I see, be careful, when you stop taking this, you may have withdrawal-like you, symptoms? You won't see that on the bottle, which is where you should see it, no. But doctors are told that now. No, doctors are told, oh, our drugs don't cause withdrawal. Uh, they cause something called discontinuation syndrome, but that's transient and mild. Don't worry about it too much. It wasn't until December 2001 that this precaution about discontinuation was added to the package insert. Before then, millions of prescriptions were sold without a warning or precaution on the insert. Only brief mentions in the back about reports of withdrawal symptoms. Now Primetime has obtained an internal document from 1997 showing that in some studies, the number of people taking Paxil who experienced withdrawal symptoms was shockingly high. We found 25%, 42%, even as high as 62%. But these numbers were not included in the warning given to doctors or patients. And take a look at these documents, directing sales reps to minimize concerns about discontinuation, to try to even avoid using the word withdrawal, and to not focus on how often these effects occur. And maybe this document provides the simplest explanation of why this company wanted to downplay discontinuation. Do you believe that the decision 
of some companies not to reveal negative data? Is it about science or sales? Oh, this is about money. This is not about science. The pharmaceutical industry has systematically misled physicians and patients. Congressman Henry Waxman is on the committee investigating the antidepressant manufacturers. Until we met with him, he wasn't aware these withdrawal documents even existed. What we need to know is what the test showed, not just what the drug companies want us to know about the test, because they want to uh, tell us the positive information and suppress or downplay uh, the negative. That's exactly what Congress was investigating this fall. I am David Wheaton, Senior Vice President for U.S. Regulatory Affairs at GlaxoSmithKline. They brought in representatives from all the antidepressant manufacturers, including the makers of Paxil. And that's why part of the goal is to get this information out to the general population as well as physicians. By putting a, a, a host of, of very confounded data on a patient label about negative studies, that could potentially, potentially do more harm than good. Withdrawal wasn't covered at the hearing. Congress Families involved call the company's responses stonewalling. Well, I call on them to open up their files now so we know what's going on. And demand more answers, more accountability. We couldn't get Dr. Whedon or any other representative from the makers of Paxil to do an on-camera interview. Do more harm. The makers of Paxil say they've provided adequate and complete warnings to physicians about the risks of withdrawal. In a letter to Primetime, they suggest discontinuation isn't a major concern because for most who experience it, the symptoms are mild to moderate and generally they go away within two weeks. But then, in the same letter, the company admits that in their own studies, as many as 21% of people taking Paxil experience symptoms potentially associated with withdrawal. That's a much higher number and a much higher risk than the 2% or greater figure they put in the package insert. I really would have liked to have known that this was going to happen to me and given my consent and weighed the risks and the, you know, the positive and the negative and is it worth it? And now look at me. I really feel like I'm not the person that I was a few years ago. The women you've just heard from tell us they're still seeking the peace they hope the drugs would provide. And just this week, British medical authorities gave makers of antidepressants another blow. An official recommendation that young adults ages 18 to 30, not just children or teens, should be very closely monitored when starting the drugs.